the grace of God is sufficient for you. Um, my name is uh, Mr. Rudolph Boy. Um, I'm here to give a testimony um, with my wife. The grace of God is sufficient. My name is Kede Zoboy. I'm a teacher. Yes, um, we're here to give a testimony about our marriage and um, how or what has happened since we got married, what we went through, the challenges we went through, how God has helped us through to the day to day that we are seated here. Um, we have more than 11 years in marriage. We got married in um, 2000 and, no, let me say first, I, I paid for Lobola. That was in 2008, 2007, sorry. Then uh, after that, I left for China. Then uh, when I left for China, I stayed in China for two years. Then I came back. Then uh, we celebrated our wedding. Then after celebrating our wedding, that's when trouble started. Um, on, the, on my wife's side, the day we had uh, our, our white wedding celebration, nothing went well. Um, the tents were not pitched properly. It, it was just a mess. There was a wheel wind that came. It took everything. But we continued uh, with our marriage. It, uh, um, we managed to, to celebrate in Sefupe. Then from there, we went to Tutume also the other weekend. It was also a challenge. Um, there were quite a lot of things, but we, we soldiered on by the grace of God. And that is when the challenge of my marriage started. Since that time, since 2010, up to now 2020, 10 years after that, we, we were like fighting on almost every month. Uh, we're arguing, we never agreed on anything. We never planned anything together as a husband and wife. Um, affection was gone for so many years in this marriage. But um, 2012, we had a serious problem now. Uh, that one, I thought that, no, I can't be in this marriage. I, I, I'm divorcing. I divorced. And after divorcing, I felt again that I can't be in Botswana. I can't live in the country. So I left for Australia to go and do my PhD. I went to Australia, we kept on communicating, talking to, to my wife, you know, because she remained with the kids. Now that was, we had divorced. Then we went ahead, she kept on going to church. I was not going to church myself that time. I was not going to church at all, uh, but I believed in God. Um, then sometimes January 2015, uh, when I left for Australia, I left with my wedding band, even though we had divorced. Then at some point it got disappeared i don't know how it got out of my hand and i don't know then uh sometimes in february 2015 when i woke up in the morning at around four o'clock i found that wedding band put on top of the laptop that i was working on you know the whole night and i was like what's this where is this wedding band coming from i've got almost a year or two no knowing where it is not you know it was not on my finger then i called my wife though we had, we had divorced. So we're communicating with Skype and the kids. And uh, um, I told her that, you know, I find the ring here and you know this ring has long disappeared. She said, but uh, we have divorced. So, so you know, I'm just telling you that I find this ring on top of the, of the, or the laptop. And, you know, a week after that, I don't know what it is, but I told myself I'm going back home and uh, I'm going to rebuild my marriage no matter what. So packed my bags from Australia came home. When I came here, that was in 2015, she took me straight to 3G. Said, you know what, let's go to 3G. And I was like, ah, 3G, what is this 3G and all that? And when I came here, the first day I, I, I stepped here, I felt like, no, 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 no. This place, there's something that I don't understand about this place. It's not like any other church that I've been to. I've been visiting a lot of churches, but no, there's something in this church. And we kept on coming, kept on coming, and we still had problems in the marriage. Um, affection was gone. We would meet as husband and wife once in a while, and sometimes it doesn't work out. And I would be very angry, suspecting her of doing, maybe cheating on me, doing all these other things. And she would also suspect me of doing that. She would come, we argue, and once we argue, we we'll take two months not talking to each other, but we stay in the same room, imagine. And we have kids. So when we're the kids, we pretend that everything is fine and all that. And this thing was eating me inside, eating me inside all the time. Uh, we came to see the man of God. Um, we were prayed for. 
And the first time I got prayed for here, when I was delivered, I, I thought I was delivered, you know, for the marriage to be okay. But God had his own plans. You know, I had some, I would call those chronic illness then. I had what we call heart palpitations. And I had told myself that I'm living with heart palpitations. It's part of my life. But when the man of God prayed for me, I forgot when, was, when that was, I think around 2016, 17. That day, the heart palpitations disappeared. Everything, I used not to eat onions. Everything disappeared. The dizziness, everything disappeared. Then I said, but I wanted my marriage to be delivered. But now, you know, heart palpitations, I'm delivered from heart palpitations. What is this? Spirit of anger, it went. I used to be angry like this. Just, and when I got angry, I would like, I would want to destroy her. Then time went by. We came to see the man of God just before the lockdown. And man of God told me, he said something that I never said, I never thought he would say to me. You know in your heart, you have not forgiven your wife. And something very hot. From there I started, you know, I couldn't talk properly. I started stammering, stammering. And I, I couldn't control myself. I couldn't, I didn't understand what was happening. And I felt in my heart like, indeed it's true. I didn't forgive my wife. Because all this anger, the quarreling and the fighting, I would always be looking at, my wife did this thing to me in the past. So I can't, for, you know, every time I, I look at her, that comes back, that comes back. And that day, men of God in prayer for I said, no, come to church again. I would, uh, before I deliver you, I want to talk to you. Then we came. Uh, he prayed for us. And my prayer was, the God of 3G, the God of Prophet Cedric, deliver my marriage. If there can be peace in my marriage, then there will be peace in my heart and in, even at my workplace and everything that I do. We left that place. That very day when we were driving back home, you know, uh, we had, I had built walls with my wife. I could not share with her quite a lot of things. But that day I told her, you know, something happened. I don't know what, but I know God is with us. We went ahead. Everything changed when we got home. I could see my wife starting to have affection for me. She's, she, she would call me when I'm at work. I would call her when, I, when she's at work and say, but what is this? What, what has happened? What has changed? Then something said to me, Faith, God has touched your marriage. It will not come like whew, at once, but God has touched your marriage. And since then, me and my wife, we can sit down and play. For this past 10, 15 years, we never planned anything together. But since after that, uh, um, the first time we came, we sit down and we plan together, okay, we need to open a bank account, a joint bank account together. We have that project that we need to finish that project. But before those things, no, not at all. And I would tell my wife, you know, I've realized that our marriage is under spiritual attack and we need to pray. Before I was just praying by myself. I would not pray with her. I would call my kids. We, we, we pray, it's our kids anyway. I don't have any other kids outside the, the marriage. It's even though we divorced, we came back and married again. And uh, <laughs> uh, would pray, you know, I would pray with the kids and leave her out. When she says, why are you not calling me? And say, ah, I thought you were sleeping. And since then, you know, we pray together. Uh, we have breakfast together. We talk, me and my wife. You know, even if we have an argument. Before when we had an argument, we would not talk to each other for a month or two months. But these days, we can argue now, now. And from there, you know, we walk out together, together again, and you know, we talk as if we were not even arguing. There's that peace in, in my heart of forgiveness and, and loving her. My husband has said it all. It's, it's, it's beautiful. We, when, when, when we divorced, I, I had trouble. I felt I was carrying this load, this burden in my heart because when he left me, I was expecting our third child. And uh, it, it was not easy, it was painful for me. But I could not cry. I felt I didn't want to hurt the, the baby that I was carrying. I felt I did, I had to do everything at that time in my power to protect this baby. So I just say to God, whatever I'm going through, it's for me, this baby is innocent. This baby, cover him, cover him, because that was before I even got to know the gender. But in the process, I said to God, because I have two girls, give me a girl, give me a boy. 
and protect this boy from the pain. So I never had time to cry. I never had time to mourn. Most of the time, I'll be at school because when he left, I went to school as well to do my degree. So it was school. From school, my kids, there was no moment that I would have to shed a tear to be able to, 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 to take out the pain, to take out the pressures that I was carrying in me. So for all these years, I moved with that load. And when it happened, for starters, no one ever checked me, my parents, no one. I was here alone with my kids. And that pained me too much, too, so much so that I thought, ah, if this is God's doing, then it means I need to deal with God alone and not even con con consider or talk to any other person. That, that's a time, a moment in my life that I learned the secret that one can have with God. Because I felt if my mother cannot come and check on how I'm doing and I'm going through the divorce period, my siblings cannot check on me, then there's no other person who can do a better job than God. And like he said, we divorced. 2014, the, 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 the marriage was, they call it annulified. It was dissolved. They call, it was dissolved in 2014. And in 2015, that's when, 2014, after a few months, we talked about getting back together, but then he had to fly back to Australia. When he was there, I, I don't know what happened. God had his ways. God did what he did. And um, it wasn't instant like that. He's back. I celebrated his back and forth because every night I'll be saying to the kids, they never knew about it. They never got to know the husband has left the mother. So every night we say, come, come, let's pray for daddy's protection. Let's pray for daddy. We'll pray together. They will be going to bed. The whole night I'll be awake because of the pain, trying to suppress the pressure. That, so I think this pain built up in me so much so that even when he was around, I always felt when he starts arguing that Kana tomorrow he might leave me. When he starts the argument, Kana, he might say he's going. So I never really opened up. Yeah, but it actually, the, the, that was the, every time it was when we start arguing mm. over a little thing, mm. the only thing I would say is, no, what, I'm quitting. I'm, I'm, I, I regret why house, I eh? remarried <laughs> you, you know, or leave my house, get out and go and all that. And I would say that, but, you know, after a few seconds, I feel, no, 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 but you know what, I can't live without my wife. And, but pride also was coming in and saying, no, but she can go, I don't care, you know. I have my own money, I have this, I can do this, so why do I need it? I, I'll take my kids, I can take off my kids and all that. But coming to 3G just showed me that it's not all about you having that, you know. Um, having my wife, I mean, I, I become a strong man spiritually when my wife is there with me spiritually. Mm. So uh, maybe, you know, that when I was in Australia, when I, I had to find my ring, when it had disappeared. Then when I called it to say, Can I ring it here? He said, no, now I've been praying. Yeah, because in 2014, when I got here, I was a visitor as well, because I was told of prayer line. Uh, we came, you know, you dropped me off and decided to say, I'm going back, I can't wait. So I was here, uh, I, I was told, the, the prophet of God, he will just tell you, your problem. So I was here waiting and crying to God. God, I've been praying. My husband left. He's here. I was expecting him to come back here and we rebuild the family, but it still doesn't seem to add up. So when I came here, I was prayed for. And I believed, okay. I was touched. No word was said. The pain is still there. My husband is going back to Australia very soon. What's, what's next? Because then I had not even started attending this ministry fully. But when he came back in 2015, I had now started to be part of this. I said, you know, the first time I got to this place, something happened. I might not know what, but something in me happened. I, you know, this ministry, when we get to hear about it the first time, there'll be a lot of things said, a lot of stories. The first thing you hear is, people telling you stories. 
And I got to a point of saying, ah, let me go and find out for myself exactly what is going on there. But before I go there, I want you, God, to be at your time. So when, when I came here, I don't know, his, his words were like, this is a home now, I want to be here. She was like, ah, okay, I'm loving it. I'm Currently loving Currently the marriage is, is beautiful. It. It's beautiful. We, we can sit together. We can just take a drive and talk and plan, you know, just funny things. And we, we, we can even um, bath together, you know, look at each other as husband and wife. We, we can talk, you know, and we don't judge each other anymore. But before when she says something, I've already judged her. Before I could say something, she has already judged me and say, I knew you would say this. But now there's no judgment. There's, um, we, we take each other's children of God and we, 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 every time we ask God, even we say, let's pray, let's pray about this, let's pray about this. But before it was not like that. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for Thank delivering for our marriage. Thank you, Thank Lord you, Jesus, Jesus, for taking care of us for throughout this. Us. Thank you, Lord. Yeah.